Amigos, amigas, saludos especiales. Ya está entre nosotros el nuevo disco de Jungle. Se llama Loving in Stereo. De él ya conocemos varias canciones. Una de ellas se llama Keep Moving. La otra se llama Talk About It. Hay otra que se llama Romeo. Acaban de lanzar una nueva canción, un nuevo video. Es una especie de experiencia cinematográfica lo que están presentando estos dos muchachos de Inglaterra, quienes conocimos por allá en 2011 con una canción llamada The Hit y luego con Platoon. Más adelante con Busy Earning, con Smile, con Heavy California. Tuvimos la oportunidad de presentarlos en un show especial para la X103.9 FM en 2019 y ahora están de vuelta y tengo la oportunidad de conversar con Tom, uno de ellos luego de esta ausencia de más o menos dos años de esta pandemia que ha cambiado para Jungle, cómo fue el proceso de construcción de estas nuevas canciones y mucho más, así que es un gusto tenerlo aquí en el canal y por supuesto compartirlo con todos ustedes, aquí está Tom de Jungle presentando Loving in Stereo So like I, need some more, I, need, I need some more Rick and Morty in my life, dude. There's <laughs> not enough episodes, man. What's up with Rick and Morty? Why is every... I, I, I'm still trying to I think it's so. I think, it, I think it's so beautifully metaphysical. And the jokes are inc so incredibly subtle. But also, like, Rick Sanchez, just what an amazing character. Like, you, you can't fucking write that shit, man. We, we obviously can, but... It's just perfect, man. And, like, obviously for, like, sci-fi nerds and, like guys who like cartoons and that sort of like weird fucking dark fucked up humor that's the one man it definitely is man how are you how, how you doing yeah. how you been it's been a while um we're good we are sort of feeling our way back into the world um releasing some new music which is really exciting uh and yeah just getting on with things it's hot in london at the moment which is good and bad at the same time because london's not very good for the heat but yeah look ultimately we feel like we've made a a great record that we love and we're really excited to share it with the world hey take me through it man i want to know everything about this new album because you know we're big fans you know we love the forever stuff and we had you here perform it and it was such an amazing moment for us you know uh live you know i don't know if you remember how everyone just of course you know it was how could i forget how could i forget <laughs> everyone went insane with that one man it was crazy <laughs> That's definitely one of the most uh, memorable shows of that campaign, for sure. Definitely. I thought it was just so... It was so passionate and emotional, and uh, it was such it was such a joy to be a part of it, you know? Yeah, thank you. Well, look, we'll, we'll come back whenever we can, as soon as we can, I promise. Definitely, and I look forward to being there and, you know, hanging with you guys once again. But take me through this new process and what it was like and how it was different to Forever and the whole thing. I just, I gotta say I gotta say before you start that I already bought the special edition, the whole thing, the cap, oh, the, the t-shirt, the vinyl, the whole thing. Muchas gracias. Um, well, listen, I think ultimately this record and everything that surrounds it, the visuals, the videos, the whole concept is is confidence and energy and and capturing an idea in its essential form, you know not overcomplicating your ideas, not second guessing, you know, having the belief in your own creativity and the people around you that inspire you, having the belief that like you're going to make something that you love and that you're invested in and that you want to go back to time and time again. And, and we're just really proud of it. I think we've ultimately made a record that we feel like we've been trying to make for the last 10 years, if that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think we've finally sort of reached the level of intensity and sonic, uh, clarity um that we've been reaching for for a long time now so it feels like jungles kind of come home in a way yeah did the pandemic uh, influence the music or were you already were you all set to do this new album even as the forever campaign was moving along we were we were pretty much ready to go i mean it, the pandemic was obviously you know t terrible for a lot a lot worse for, for people other than us as well you know we were in a very privileged position um that we weren't meant to be on tour we didn't have anything like huge cancelled but you know it kind of put the brakes on the process of making the record the potentially like I, i'd say that like 90 of the record was done by the end of 2019 um and we had to try really hard not to overthink it do you know what i mean we kind of like we had to like freeze time at the end of 2019 
And then when we knew that we'd be able to sort of release stuff and it might be a little bit better for the touring horizon, we kind of got back into gear on the record and, and finished it off sort of, you know, over, over Christmas and the beginning of this year. So because for, for us, like the fourth dimension of jungle is the fans and the live experience. And I think we wouldn't have wanted to release the record and not be able to give the fans the opportunity to see it in the flesh. You know what I mean? I think that's so important for us and it really validates what we do because we stand on stage and, and we have people singing our songs to us and it feels good because you've connected with people and, 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 and you feel like you've made a little bit of a difference somewhere. It seems to me as though ever since you guys started and we started playing your music and discovering you, you've, you've grown not only as musicians, spiritually, personally, but also as a, as a band. Because back in 2011, 2010, I don't know, it was like I, I would see you guys lurking in the shadows. And then, you know, when we started chasing after you guys going to Mexico City and then, you know, uh, seeing you perform here at Stereo Picnic, it, like you two guys would be the center of attention. But then, mm -hmm. you know, once once we saw you in May of 2019, perform it was like a big family right mm -hmm. it felt mm -hmm. like oh my god this is like a project that's getting huge am i right about this yeah i think naturally we've progressed and we've become more confident um you know at the end of the day when we never really saw ourselves as performers um i think we've always enjoyed being behind the camera behind the desk as producers directors you know creatives who have a vision but aren't necessarily confident enough to stand at the front of the stage and deliver that day in day out and so you know a lot of the early part of, of of jungle was about essentially like being quite shy and protecting ourselves and and then as you get older and wiser and, and you learn to love yourself a little bit more and you learn to respect your process and what you do as an artist rather than sort of relying on the people around you to give you that um it gives you the confidence to open up And, and be more brave um and i think now at, at this moment in time like we're at our like ultimate of that you know what i mean we're playing music on stage with our our really good friends who are just like unbelievably talented i can't describe how good these guys are and yeah and i think that's reflecting in the in, in the music that we're putting on record now you know yeah when you start recording does everyone in the in the group does uh, Do all the friends participate in the recording or is it just you two guys, you know, figuring out what the idea is going to be like and then just bringing them over? It, it depends, really. I mean, like sometimes some of the songs, it's just me writing or it's just Josh or it's me and Josh or it's a load of people in a studio. So the process we now have is is incredibly fluid and that's really beneficial because like it just means that you're you're not second guessing, you know what I mean? You're just letting everything come out in its natural way at its natural time. Um, you're not sort of pre prescribing what it should be, what it should sound like. So we're just very reactive. And I think what we've tried to do on this record, well, what we've achieved on this record is capturing all of the ideas in their like earliest form and, and trying not to over edit, trying not to think about if it's right or wrong. You know what I mean? If it feels good and it happened quickly, It's going on the record because that is that's where you're going to get that real synergy of energy sort of naivety there's this childish element to this record i think finally that we've found again like it's playful um so yeah it's just all kind of reflecting back to how we feel as people at the moment like very confident very happy um and just excited to be back out playing music and and, and making records how long does it take you to get it all together After, after you finish the campaign and, and get in the studio? Yeah, so we're, the thing is, when we're, when we're on tour, we're always sort of working here and there when we can get the mic out on a tour bus or set up a little room in a venue where we've got like a mini studio, then we're, we're always kind of trying out things and experimenting. Um, but I guess like it was good to take it. We took a bit of time off in, in 2019, um, to had a few holidays, which were well-deserved. And then, yeah, just sort of, we just sort of naturally... It comes to a point basically where we draw a line in the sand and we go what's good what's not and all the stuff that's been sort of in the in the ring or all the ideas all the little like bits then sort of get collaged together and and, and we make a record out of it all what where does a record start where does the album start does it start with a particular song 
I mean, it has to eventually, right? So you've got to start with something. <laughs> I know, it's kind of obvious, but, but I, I guess I'm asking, like, like the first songs that w we hear are uh, Keep Moving. We get Keep Moving yeah, yeah. right off the bat. Yeah. Is that the first yeah. one that pops up in, in, in the creation of the album? Probably not. I think probably, like, Fire and Talk About It are two of the earliest tracks that we wrote. Um, and then it's just about piecing it together and what, what we think the audience want to hear first, what we think is a really good representation of the new direction we've gone in. You know, I think Keep Moving is, you know, it's not unfamiliar as Jungle, um, but I think it's more bold. I think it's got a little bit more, like, energy, and, you know, it's the first time that we've delivered that real big choir and that group of vo that group vocal that we've kind of always really tried hard to achieve but never really managed it. And finally, you know, you have the confidence to, to put a choir together of friends and colleagues and, and singers from around London, Um And you get that sort of magic, and that was really surprising to us. So Keep Moving was like, you know, this is still jungle, but there's something different here, and there's something new for people. And then we talk about it. I think that's kind of the first track that we've put out now where I think people are beginning to understand that there is a new direction and there is a sort of a step up in, in, in a way. Are there strings on Keep Moving? Uh, yeah, very much so. Um, we Man, worked with we it. worked with an incredible yeah we worked with an incredible string arranger. Um, and did a big session at the end of 2019. And it's amazing, man, because you suddenly, it just brings it to life. And I think we've always loved that that disco sound, that 70s feel, whether it's the Bee Gees, whether it's Donna Summer, do you know what I mean? It's like, and when you're finally like hearing it played on your music and really working, but also feeling new, do you know what I mean? I, I don't think we're, I don't think we're just copying it. I don't think we're, it's a pastiche of those styles. Um, I think what we've done is managed to find a way of updating it and bringing it to a new audience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's refreshing and uh, incredibly exciting once you hear those strings kick in. It's like it really gives you this adrenaline rush, you know? Yeah. It's really cool. I think you can just I think you can hear the realness and that's potentially what we lose in a lot of music these days. Yeah. You know what I did the other day? I was listening to James Brown's The Payback and Classic. Uh, And and the very end of that track has got this these strings, and I was like, you know that the very end of the payback yeah. sounds like the beginning of Keep Moving, and I was like, I was in the, <laughs> <laughs> it was I was like in the middle of a party, and I was like, oh shit, this is gonna blow people's heads off because it seems it, it seemed like it was seamless and i was i was i was very happy to hear that because i <laughs> like 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 you said um it doesn't feel like you're copying anything and it's not a pastiche it's real. it's the real thing it's 2021 happening you know it's really cool yeah thank you it feels like that and you know we've always we've always worn our influences on our sleeves do you know what i mean it's it's but i think also we're influenced by modern music essentially like producers new artists people making new sounds do you know what i mean when we started out child of love jay paul jay diller huge influences on us and, and what and what those guys do so well is they 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 give you a little bit of musical nostalgia at the same time as hitting you in the face with something that you've never heard before and we've always wanted to we've always wanted to surprise ourselves that way that was another cool thing that happened right after you guys Uh, kept on moving towards uh, the campaign of Forever and was uh, watching you release this collection of DJ sets and music that you loved and I'd love to, if you could take me through the process of what that was like uh, for you guys to sit and, you know, pick your favorites and put them out there, you know, on Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff. Yeah, sure. And we ended up doing a, a, a Late Night Tales, which is great, you know. I know. Um It's um, it's just really, we've always loved music. And I think when you find a track and you have a connection to it, you you want other people to have that connection too. You want other people to be as excited as you are when they hear that music. And we've got folders and folders and folders of music that we DJ, that we listen to, that like, you know, inspire certain moods. Um, and so it's, it was really fun sort of getting into the world of playlisting and and and, and, and radio DJing and, and selecting because that's something that we've always been super passionate about and you know ultimately I I'd, I'd love to get on the, I'd love to be on the radio I think I think I'd really enjoy sharing things that I love with with people and hoping that they feel the same way about them. You ever gotten an offer to do that? Not yet. 
I'm 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 here. I can move to Colombia if you yeah. need me. <laughs> you should, man. <laughs> I'll learn Spanish. I promise. <laughs> you don't have to. I mean, we can do some translation or figure out a way to, for for people. I mean, music is a universal language. We'll just, we'll just overdub it all. We'll, we'll overdub it all, man. That's fine. <laughs> But you know what? You should actually, if if, if it's possible, you know, um, uh, contemplate. With, Maybe sending us a radio show this way, you know, like you did with Annie Mac a few days ago or something. Yeah, man. Well, listen, let's let's talk to management and see if we can get something sorted out. That sounds like an interesting idea. Well, tell me more about um, more songs. Tell me, tell me what's coming up so that I have a little bit more content to share. Between now and the record coming out, there's some really exciting stuff happening. Um, we've got a collaboration with quite a well-known dance music producer i can't name him or her at the moment but that was something that happened when uh you know we, we met them in la and sent them a load of stuff and they worked it into a really cool track so that's going to be dropping quite soon i think um and then a few more tracks from the record something called uh, a track called truth a track called romeo which features a u.s rapper called bars um we met him at a festival in new york city and we'd just come off stage having played a set and had a really good time like i remember someone like gave me this like huge stuffed bear and like i sat him down at the side of the stage and had a good like had a good laugh with the audience about all of that and um and yeah he just came into the dressing room at the end of the show and was like yo you guys are fucking sick um and we just got chatting and had a couple of beers and had some food and just hung out all afternoon and evening backstage at this festival and just really connected with him and Then when we were in London in 2019, finishing off the record, he texted us out of the blue and was like, yo, I'm in town. Like, what are you doing? We were like, well, we're at the fucking studio finishing the album. Come and come and do some work. And and we kind of cooked that track up quite quickly, um, which is amazing. Like, he was just such a cool guy to work with. Um, and then, yeah, so like the track with bars and then a couple more singles, one called Truth, which I think is another sort of nod to the more like high energy kind of well, not right rocky but like it kind of feels like month of may by arcade fire do you know that little surprise that you get on the suburbs when suddenly they have that pretty like pretty uh clear cut like punk record right um so that kind of has that sort of vibe and then a and then a really great dance hit called all of the time that will be coming out before the record comes out on the 13th of august so yeah exciting things a really cool little timeline cropping up now and, and kind of solidifying um and look we just really really hope that we can get out to colombia soon and play some shows because we have such a deep connection with with the colombian audience and uh, and our audience across latin america as well man like there's just such a a synchronicity between us and the music we make and and your and your vibe as a as a community um It's just something that we didn't really expect to experience. And from the moment we set foot in, in Central and Southern America, we've just felt so welcome. And, you know, it's crazy to think that we've played in Colombia like three times. We've played in Peru. We played in uh, we played in Quito in Ecuador. Like, that was fucking crazy, man. Like, so we just want to get back, really. We really miss it. Yeah, we look forward to having you here, man. Uh, this is the first time collaborating with a rapper, right? Yeah, hundred um, percent. Really exciting, and I think it's just, I think it just shows that we have so much confidence in jungle. Do you know what I mean? Jungle is something that is so much bigger than us, and I think for a while we maybe got wrapped up in making it too much about us, um, and so having the confidence to put other people's voices on the record um, and allow them the space to represent what jungle means to them and what it means to us, I think that's a really cool thing. Let's talk about the videos. We've always talked about the videos from the very beginning when you guys started doing busy earning time and and how dancing plays such a key role in what you guys do visually and how it's evolved and turned into uh, this incredible, uh, almost, uh, I don't know how to put it, but it's a style you know it's a, it's an aesthetic it 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 becomes mm -hmm. a part of who, of what jungle is about you can almost not uh detach dancing yeah. from jungle and jungle from dancing you know let's talk a bit about that well that's great i mean that's the concept from day one um i think it'll be so cool when we look back in 20 30 40 years time at what we did in this period of our creativity 
I think it'll be so cool to see that we had a, had a vision and, and stuck with it and really believed so much in the power of that singular vision to carry through across a whole career, essentially. Like I can honestly never see us doing a video that doesn't have dance in it because it would just feel so unnatural. It would feel it would feel false and and sort of anti jungle you know dance is one of the one of the the four the four corners for us you know um it's the most simple idea it's not it's not particularly you know we can't claim that it's an original idea to put dancers in a music video but i think it, that's the beauty of it but it is different it, it is very different we were talking to um my producers at the TV network uh, a few days before we got the possibility to talk to you. And they were like, you know, you think we could get Jungle again to talk on, on TV? And I was like, sure, sure, we'll, we'll figure out a way. And But I'd like to know a little bit, like, what's your interest? And they were like, it's just the way they, they seem to grab dancing and, and put it in, in a whole new level. You know, it's not, it's not like you say... And a very, it's not an an idea that you just came up with yourselves, but it is very different, you know. Well, I think I, th I think I think it's about working with incredible people and and finding talent that is so unique and singular, whether it's choreographers or individual dancers, um, and just allowing them to tell the story, not necessarily giving them too much direction. Um, You know, obviously we have an we have an incredibly strong vision aesthetic. You know, we try and shoot everything with one shot, um, as much as that can be very painful at times. Um, but it's that energy, and and maybe uh, and maybe you're right. I, I think maybe because it is, they are so pure. It is just dance. It is just about that group. It is just about that one. Lo it's almost like one location, one talent, and watch their magic and potentially we differentiate ourselves in the fact that we don't edit our videos a lot. There's no cutting, there's no tricks, there's no effects, there's no CGI, there's nothing. There's not even us occasionally turning up and pretending to be singing down a microphone, you know? So yeah, maybe I guess they are singular and unique in that respect, but that's just potentially our, our aesthetic and what we want to see on, on the screen, you know? Have you ever flirted with the idea of doing anything else in the videos? Now that you mentioned that you've never really sh appeared in them. I can honestly say that we have fought very hard to remove ourselves from our videos because like I said, we're like, we see ourselves as directors, not performers. And I think we really enjoy the process of making movies and the process of making albums. We don't, we don't necessarily see ourselves as pop stars. Do you know what I mean? And so as much as we can, we want to maintain that role as the creators, the directors, the producers, um, and allow the talent that we surround ourselves with to tell, to tell a slightly more outward facing story. Tom, it's great seeing you once again, even if it's virtually, I look forward to seeing you in 2022 performing here in Colombia and wherever else you're going to be. I suppose, you know, you're getting ready for a big, big festival season, which is going to be crazy after all this. I really, I really hope so. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. And um, I can't wait to have a beer with you in person and have a chat about Rick and Morty. Take good care. <laughs> Take good care, man. <laughs> Take good care. Say hello to everyone. Gracias. Gracias. Right. Gracias. Ciao.